Gunners, it's Killa B, and I'm here for another installment of my lineup breakdown. Uh, we're going to look at week eight uh, over on DraftKings. Uh, check out my lineup, and you know, a lot of injuries this week, and uh, hopefully you guys were able to avoid uh, avoid all the guys that got hurt this week. So uh, let's dive in here. Uh, so starting at quarterback, uh, went with Philip Rivers. Uh, it's weird to say that a quarterback uh, was a must play for me, but after going through everything, uh, I needed him in my lineup. Uh, usually projected values at the quarterback spot between like top guy, middle tier guys, uh, the values are a lot smaller, uh, especially when you're comparing it to running back, wide receiver, and tight end spots. But uh, Rivers, I mean, Rivers has been super hot the last four weeks. He's produced 29, 25, 31, and 30 DraftKings points. Um, so an average of 29 DraftKings points. And uh, this is kind of a perfect storm here. You had a uh, San Diego's got a, a funnel offense where they've been just passing the ball versus uh, their, their run game really hasn't gotten off. Um, and then Baltimore has a funnel defense where they give up a lot of pass and, you know, they, they shut down the run pretty good. So uh, just was a perfect, perfect storm for Phil Rivers to be uh, our quarterback this week. And then uh, moving on to running back, all three of these guys, Justin Forsett, Todd Gurley, and uh, McFadden, uh, were all uh, needs, actually, in my lineup. Uh, uh, after looking at it, it seemed like three guys stuck out, and those were the three guys. And since it's a cash game, I, I almost always recommend rolling with a running back uh, for for the flex. So uh, here we go, Justin Forsett. Um, basically, just the not matchup versus uh, San Diego on paper. Uh I, I like the the game flow, the projected game flow of this, uh, where Baltimore should win, uh, according to Vegas. But even if uh, they were behind, it's not like Forsett is game flow dependent. Uh, he does a good job of catching the ball here. Uh, but definitely disappointed in his performance. 69 yards, uh, actually 74 total yards with one catch. Uh, expected a lot more out of him. And then moving on to Todd Gurley. Uh, still underpriced at 6,300 at home. Uh, and you know, he's been really hot since he's been, uh, getting the carries there. So, uh, 49ers struggling defense, struggling offense, which gives him added opportunities to carry the ball. Uh, this is the easiest pick of the day for me. He didn't disappoint. Uh, he had a total of 146 yards. Uh, so he got the yardage bonus, uh, for rushing, uh, and then added three catches with a rushing touchdown. So, uh, love that. And then uh, we'll go down to the other running back, Darren McFadden here. Uh, just, you know, once I got word that uh, there was going to be, he was going to be the man in the backfield, basically 100% of the time. Uh, love the situation be behind one of the best offensive lines in Dallas. Uh, you know, he, he, was, he wasn't as effective as I, I thought he could be. Uh, and that's main, mainly because of uh, Dallas's pass offense here. So, uh, but we'll take that usage all day. Uh, he ended up having 113 yards with six catches. He didn't get the, any yardage bonus, but uh, like how much he was used here in the passing game. So definitely return value at only $3,800 price tag. So, um, and then moving on to wide receiver, uh, Antonio Brown. Uh, his price dropped 1400 without Big Ben in the lineup. Uh, it was kind of a gamble, not knowing how effective Roethlisberger would be. Um, you could tell if you watched the game, he didn't really have any lateral movement. Um, he was he was decent going back in the pocket and going forward, but could not move side to side at all, uh, which affected his elusiveness and his throwing accuracy. Um, but, you know, I expect Brown's usage go up here uh, now that there's no Le'Veon Bell in the backfield. So just know that going forward. We got saved here by his touchdown, uh, six catches, 47 yards, and a touchdown. So uh, not too disappointed in the performance, uh, but I was expecting I was expecting more yards here. Um, and then Stefan Diggs. Actually, these next three guys, Stefan Diggs, DeAndre Hopkins, and Crockett Gilmore, I'm going to be talking about, uh, they weren't in my lineup uh, until Sunday morning. So uh, I did make a pivot uh, with these three guys. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. But here, Stefan Diggs, uh, about as consistent as it gets uh, the last few weeks here. He's had the last four weeks, 10 targets, 9, 9, and 12 targets. So he's definitely Minnesota's number one wide receiver. 
Um, like the matchup versus the uh, Bears cornerbacks. And then the only thing I was scared about right here is uh, just Adrian Peterson getting off in the first quarter. Uh, and, you know, if he gets off early uh, and is effective early, he could be on his way to a 30-carry day. But luckily, we kind of avoided that um, and returned a really good day. Six catches, 95 yards, and, uh, and a touchdown for Stefan. So that's awesome. Uh, and then DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, no Arian Foster. Uh, I just thought, well, usage is definitely going to stay right there for Hopkins and maybe even go higher uh, with no Arian in the backfield. Um, I was just short of getting Julio in my lineup here, which I did like uh, Julio's floor more than Hopkins' floor, but um, wasn't tr truly enamored with the matchup here in comparison to uh, Julio's matchup. And that's kind of uh, why I was kind of unsure of what I wanted to do here, but uh, didn't mind pivoting to Hopkins here. Um, his floor on the year for targets has been 11, and that's what he got here also. Um, and, you know, eight catches, 94 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, we'll take that. That's a little bit better than two and a half X here. So, and then uh, at tight end, Crockett Gilmore. Uh, this was, this is why I had to make a, a, a pivot here. I had Ladarius Green slated everywhere. And so, um, but when I got news that Antonio Gates was playing, I had to make a move. Uh, so, uh, I ended up having, uh, come Sunday, I had Julio Jones, Nate Washington, and Ladarius Green uh, as my two wide receivers and tight end. Um, I ended up swapping them for uh, for DeAndre Hopkins, Diggs, and then Gilmore. Um, so I guess the only decision I had here was what 2,700 or lower tight end I wanted. And the decision came down to Tammy and Gilmore and uh, kind of made the wrong decision there. So uh We'll take we'll take it. Luckily, we got the the touchdown. He still returned value here. I uh, he ended up getting like three and a half x at twenty five hundred dollars. So, um, two catches, eight yards, one touchdown. So, all about that touchdown. So, and then moving on to Rams defense. Uh, they were home again, uh, riding a lot of momentum from last week's performance. Um, and then the 49ers uh, offense. And I mean, just everything about the 49ers right now has been very exploitable. So, love that situation. Uh, we did get one safety, but no turnovers, um, three sacks, and then they only gave up six points. So uh, good day. Uh, could have been a great day, but definitely a good day for the Rams. Um, and overall, uh, we scored 161.74 uh, DK points here. Uh, that was good enough to win about 80, somewhere around 80 to 85% of my cash games. So uh, good, really good performance here. Could have been a lot better if I you know, would have chose a, a better tight end or, you know, got to got, got to a different look uh, with some wide receivers. But uh, pretty happy uh, with the wide receivers. None of the wide receivers were uh, total needs, but, I mean, there are a lot of, a lot of wide receivers in good situations this week. So, uh, and hopefully you guys, again, avoided all the injuries. And if not, there's always next week. All right.